Well, we have with us here the man who's responsible for the high-speed uh, rail in India, the Mumbai Ahmedabad high-speed train corridor. Let's uh, talk to him about what the status is of the project. It was last November that Prime Ministers Modi and Abe agreed upon the schedule for the high-speed rail. And therefore, next year, construction will begin, and the railway in Mumbai Ahmedabad is scheduled to end to be completed in 2023. And I understand that things are progressing on schedule. Things are progressing on schedule. Uh, any potential challenges, land acquisition challenges or engineering challenges uh, that you foresee, and how are you planning for that? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, the fact that near fact that we're going to start construction next year and it is due to be completed in 2023, the fact that in just five years we have to complete this 500-kilometer high-speed rail in itself is uh, very challenging in itself. Now, in Japan, we only have the experience of the Tokaido Shinkansen 52 years ago, uh, which started construction in 1959 and was completed in 1964. And so this is the only experience that we have, but uh, we have to complete the detailed design. Also, we have to go ahead with the land acquisition. And for this, um, it is essential that we get full support from our Indian counterparts. One of the other challenges will be how do you balance cost and tariff to make this project sustainable and viable? Uh, how do you see that balance working? And, you know, what will the fair estimation be to make this project viable and sustainable? India, remember, is also a very value-conscious market. Um, the fare of the high-speed rail in itself, I think, is a challenge. Where to set the fare, and be it uh, Japan or India, I think uh, this is a very important factor of this project. Now, um, if we were to set the tariff too high, then the number of users in India would be limited because it is too costly. Um, but um, if we were uh, to have a very low tariff, then we might have a lot of passengers, but it would be very very difficult to recover the cost that we have paid to, to build the high-speed rail. So I think achieving this balance in itself is a very important task, and we have to give due consideration to the economic status of the country, as well as the users, passengers' affordability and the quality of the high-speed rail. So I, I would like to see that the Indian government make a very um, high-level decision, a careful decision about this. And if I may add, um, also we have to think about the fact that this high-speed rail is a major social infrastructure project. And to consider covering all the costs by sheer, uh, merely setting the fare in itself is very unusual, even in the world. There are only a limited number of cases which try to cover all the costs through its fares. And uh, we also have to think of the high-speed rail's economic and social impact, the external economic impact, that is. And so part of the cost will be covered by the fare revenue, the tariff revenue, but we also have to distinguish that part to the part where we can expect um, the areas near the tracks, the line, uh, to develop. Also, the areas around the station are likely to develop, and we believe uh, that this will also have a major impact on the economic development of India. So part of the cost will have to be covered through those channels. Uh, can you explain to us the Make in India component of this project? Uh, will Japan be setting up manufacturing facilities in India to cater to this project? In uh, this Mumbai Ahmedabad uh, project, one of the three keywords that have been adopted is Make in India. This is a high-speed rail project in India. And of course, we expect it to further develop and bring about more economic development. So as was mentioned today, we have to think about India's economic development development, the big market it offers, and also how the Japanese companies together with the Indians can make contributions to the development. So we're hoping within this Mumbai Ahmedabad project to try to realize the foundation, the framework for make in India as much as possible, and also lead the way towards the future, where we can expect um, this 
big market to further expand. So this also contains this element of the future strategy. And I hope that um, the Japanese companies will take our actions and make judgments based on this understanding. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, appreciate your time.